With Evil Dead Rise just a few days away, I thought it would be fun to look back on the franchise as a whole at some of the movie posters, the iconic and not so iconic ones, and see how they shake out in 2023. You might want to grab a loved one or a blanket because things are about to get scary. Let's dive in. All right, we're starting with the first po- Oh my gosh, Bruce Campbell's here, off camera, where you can't see him. Bruce, say hi so they can- Groovy. Yeah, groovy, he said groovy, so clearly he's here. What's that, Bruce? That's a good point. He said you should subscribe to the channel Adam Does Movies because I do poster breakdown videos every week and we have to have people here. I also put out tons of movie-related content, movie reviews, rants, news stories, just, I mean, it's all things movies. It's, it's, it's called Adam Does Movies. We'd love to have you. Thanks, Bruce. Yep, you can, you can show yourself out. Yep. Okay. The first poster is from the classic Evil Dead all the way back in 1981. Directed by Sam Raimi, it stars Bruce Campbell. Fantastic film. Nice start to this property. This is a wonderful poster designed by Graham Humphreys, a dude that's been in the industry for over 40 years. He did iconic posters such as A Nightmare on Elm Street, House of a Thousand Corpses, and here we are with The Evil Dead. Look at this beautiful display. I'm a big fan of Less Is More, and here we have just one central character reaching up to the sky with what presumably will be her last breath. While another undead zombie reaches up from the grave parallel to hers, you have a nice tracking point from the top left all the way down to the center. This leads your eyes right to the central figure and it tells you a tale. A tale that's grim, a tale that's disturbing. There's a nice empty blue here full of space so that you can focus on that nice little pull quote from the legend himself, Stephen King. The most ferociously original horror film of the year. I know I'm not gonna be the first person to tell you that sex sells. So naturally this is an attractive looking woman and they went out of their way. This artist went out of his way to rip some of the key areas of her nightgown. So it reveals a little skin. Gives you a little bit of that sexual appeal too, which gets people into the theaters. Sadly, men are simple creatures. We, we see scary things, we see horror elements, we see a good looking woman. We're going to the theater. I also love the amount of detail in this poster. The painting is beautiful. You have little silhouettes here and there. You have these cool reflections off the fleshless skin rising up from the ground. And then you have this unique typography, very different than most of the stuff you see in the horror genre. It's got a rock and roll aesthetic to it, which is also telling audiences this is not your traditional horror film. And it certainly wasn't. Sam Raimi moves that camera everywhere like it's on a roller coaster. It's zooming in, it's pulling out. It's very shock and awe with this guy and I love it. I love this poster. Look how he even puts the strap down on the side showing off that shoulder, that beautiful shoulder. It's just, you want to take a bite out of it yourself. It's like you're the zombie in this situation. Let's move on. And here we have the poster for Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. I can't say I love it. I really can't. It's different than the first one. Maybe too different than the previous entry. They removed the logo treatment. Now we have a totally different typography. It's a little bit more standard. What you come to expect from a scary movie. It's almost got that dripping blood look to it. Everything's kind of oozing away from the lettering. It's punchier with the color. It's not in white anymore. Uh, there's still good negative space. I like the black off to the left side, which draws you down to the title. And this poster communicates a couple things to me. One, it's creepy. Two, it's also playful. Somehow, they managed to make this a playful, creepy poster. <laughs> I don't, it's impressive. You have human eyes looking out of a hollowed out face. Just the skull remains, but then those eyes are clearly still alive. It's, it's, it's pretty creative, I will give it that. I just don't like the inconsistency from the first movie to the second movie poster treatment. It does make good use of shadow and lighting. It's, it's a very nice render of the skull, I will say that. Easily my favorite of this Evil Dead franchise is the Army of Darkness poster and movie. Poster though kicks all sorts of ass. You have Ash front and center in a power stance. The hot chick by his side, cleavage out of course, because again, we, we have to get people into the theater. Oh yeah, and the dude's rocking a chainsaw for a hand. 
Now, anybody that's seen these movies knows Army of Darkness is far sillier than the previous two entries. This one's a full-blown comedy. Also, there's horror elements, sure, but it's not scary. It's, it's full-on camp in the best way possible. And I think that's what the poster's trying to convey. There's lots of references to the movie itself. You have the little versions of Ash stabbing him with the fork. You have the undead army behind him, flags and all. And you have skeleton warriors up front, hidden behind a vehicle, the same vehicle that will crash land at the beginning of this picture. This has that classic fantasy feel to it too. You think Star Wars when you look at something like this. The hero is standing larger than life, standing tall over all the surrounding commotion. The woman's hiding behind her man, hoping that he's gonna save the day. He's got the chest out, kind of like me, but a lot more aggressive. He's a lot more powerful, a lot, a lot more proud, I think, of his physique. And the way the painter lights this poster up is just brilliant. You have these reds and oranges illuminating everything. They start at the bottom, they work their way up through the chainsaw and the legs, they come off the side of the abs, and you even see some faint glowing in the castle behind, which ties it all together really well, up to the orange font above, which oddly says from the director of Darkman. Not from the director of Evil Dead, which makes me think Sam Raimi wants this to feel standalone-ish. He doesn't want you to think scary Evil Dead. He wants you to think something a little lighter. It's also got a hilarious tagline, trapped in time, surrounded by evil, low on gas. <laughs> it's just nonsense and it's that that's the army of darkness in a nutshell we have a nice serif font here too with really sharp points look at that a look at that r they're dangerous it's a really cool font it almost looks like dracula style you know like those are teeth ready to ready to strike it works so well with this i mean the overall painting is just gorgeous huge fan of this i could easily put this one up in the room last but not least we have the new poster for evil dead rise this one's got your standard modern Photoshop treatment to it. Not a, not a bad poster. It's kind of cool. It's kind of different. I do like how it has the old school typography for the Evil Dead Rise title going all the way back to the first Evil Dead film. Obviously it's been spruced up a little bit. I do like how they handled this treatment. In super duper tiny font above the title, it says from the visionary producer of the original classic, the producer. That says so little, it says so little. And they're doing that because this director has really nothing to his name, uh, only a few very small indie projects. So this is really the first time he's getting to step up and show his stuff. And it's kind of bizarre because this is a, a property that's very well beloved. From the looks of the trailer, it looks like they did a damn good job, but it remains to be seen. As far as this poster goes, it certainly looks like a scene from the film. It's very focused on this mom that apparently loves her children to death. You have the three kids that she's pulling in close, looking directly at you saying, yeah, these kids are gonna die. This is, this is not a, a healthy situation that we're living in right now. The mom's got some scrapes. She's got some cuts and bruises, clearly been weathered by from whatever disease is running through her body or demonic possession is probably more likely. Notice she has a tattoo on the hand. Now, I want to know if that was pre-demonic pre possession or post. Maybe she's a little freakier of a mom and she got some tats. That's okay. That's fine. No judgment there. I will say she's got some pretty nice teeth. Uh, they, they look, I mean, very, very nicely aligned. She's probably had Invisalign at some point in time. She's a redhead. I appreciate that. We don't see a lot of that in cinema. It's good representation. Overall, this is a very clean... Solid poster. I, I don't think it's anything too amazing by any means. Certainly not as great as that classic painting from the first film or the incredibly good artwork that we saw in Army of Darkness. This is just kind of a standard solid movie poster. Now because it's 2023 and I have a hard time figuring out what movie posters are coming from actual studios and what movie posters are coming from fans because fans have gotten so good at this now or other smaller shops that are trying to make a name for themselves. Maybe they were outsourced some piece of artwork to do but I will throw up a few more that are really well executed just so you can see there is a lot of creativity left in the art department. And oftentimes, unfortunately, it's not coming from the big studios. It's not coming from those big pipelines. It's from the little guy working out of his house. Well, there you have it. Evil Dead posters. You gotta love them. You gotta love this movie franchise. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are you excited for the new movie? You think it's gonna be great or is it gonna miss? Uh, I'm like, 
I'm like 80% confident it's going to be good. Uh, that's a nice place to be in 2023. Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite movie poster? And I would love to know if there's any you want to see me do next. Maybe Indiana Jones, Back to the Future. What's on the horizon for movies that we can talk about? Let me know. All right, make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Like the video if you had a good time. Hit the notification bell. That's a big one. I always forget to tell people, hit that bell. We have to. And then I'll see you next time for sure. Take care.